What's up Starcraft fans, last time we did Alarak with Wrathwalkers, this time we will do Stukov with the Apocalypse and of course Infested Bunkers. I will go as Infested Admiral, no prestige. My masteries will be Infestructure cooldown so I can use it more frequently, Apocalypse cooldown because it's a big boy, and Mech Attack Speed because I won't be going for Infested Infantry a lot. Also, I don't focus more on the bunkers themselves rather than the rally of the infested so i'll play a bit differently from how bunkers normally work so thank you to notorious thief who is supporting me the immobilization with tier uh and darth lucina superiors and shadow archon who are supporting me in the pulse cannon tier and thank you to all my supporters on patreon so yeah it is a maguro map so we can set the enemy so it'll be the same across everyone Alrighty. Let's begin. So again, the objective in missed opportunities is to defend Statman's boss. They will emerge from this little tunnel over here. They will use these tracks to harvest Terezin from the geysers and the enemies will want to destroy them. We have to stop those enemies. So what I want to do is to build up a strong economy first by starting with a fast command center. Normally I go with an overlord at around this time to increase supply. But the Overlord only provides 8 supply, which is not enough to get a few workers and then get bunkers. So I'll go instead with a faster command center so that I can actually get 15 extra supply instead of 8. That will actually be more helpful to me. Then I'll start the Overlord because I still want some workers to go with that. It's a little different from what I normally do and it's... This build is specifically made to get bunkers faster so that I can have bunkers specifically defend the first wave. I'm not sure if I would recommend this for solo queue play. In fact, I canceled two works over there because I want to start the barracks at 18 supply. This will allow me to get a couple of bunkers for the first wave and also have enough money to start those bunkers. I'll move my infested colonist compound to this specific spot here to help me wall off against the enemies. It's a specific spot that I want to wall off. Also, at the start, the creep spread is slow, so I'll use overwards to assist in the creep spreading. What I do is I enable creep spread, and then I just stand my overwards at the edge of the creep to increase that creep right away. So once the infested barracks completes, I'll start a bunker right away. And I move my barracks to this spot over here. In fact, that's not, the, that's not even the final spot. That is the final spot. So once the infested command center completes, I infest it even more. And I micro my dude links by control clicking one of them. Control clicking one of them and then right clicking the rocks. Like so, control click, right click, control click, control click, right click. And that will force all of the doodlings to attack the central rock to allow me to focus it down further. So you can see I made, I made a sort of mini wall here. If you see how it functions, the zealots cannot get a good surface area around it, which will increase the chances that my bunker just kind of survives. Also, I've rallied my infested here because, as I said, I want to focus on actually destroying enemies using the bunkers themselves and close by troopers rather than a steady rally of troopers. So I use the Apollos to clear this area. And actually, I'm going to stand or walk the Apollos to this area so I can clear this area right away. That will allow me to use the bunkers to fight the bonus. Start the engineering bay. So you can see these bunkers are massive units. I just can't see them right away. Maybe once I unload one of them later on. I also have this barracks walking out here. Kind of draw aggro if it can. So I root one bunker over here. And unroot a bunker to spread the damage evenly between the bot and my two bunkers. We don't want the zealots to focus down each bunker, or any one bunker, so I'd rather have them 
in this layout so I can have more stuff shooting but you can see the rooted bunker is armored and is a building I actually miss rally these guys here so I just stand them I have them in the whole position and then I use the Alexander I will go immediately for the bonus so I don't have to worry about it later on the Apollos already cleared this many outposts here so I can just uproot the bunkers and walk them over these bunkers are melee units however they have a lot of health so they're basically ultralisks but are very slow off creep the difference is these things have troopers inside so they can shoot while moving or specifically the troopers inside can shoot while the bunkers themselves are moving the little micro chick I used here I used the Alexander to mind control the void race here and I used the void race to right click the in immortals the immortals are hard hitting units. I don't want my bunkers fighting immortals if possible so I just mind controlled some void race and right clicked the immortals you can see these bunkers are fighting the bonus and that will bring them down I'm creating sort of mini wall here with my infested cons compound switched off normally these spawn these thing spawns use automatically but I switched off the autocast which will make the building no longer spawn units also I'm making a sort of fortress here by having a wall for my bunker so that my bunkers will survive better now you can see this bunker that doesn't have any units inside it is armored biological mechanical and most importantly massive so that does qualify for my big boys test saturated by the way on the minerals I let the harvesting bot tank a little bit of damage just to delay my apocalypse and of course a delayed start means a delayed end that will allow me to fight more waves using the apocalypse I used the borrow charge to delete the zealots right away it's apparently really good you can see the apocalypse is also massive that is great it's moving down here clear out the zealots Meanwhile, I use my bunkers to focus fire stalkers. You can actually control click the bunkers and then right click or attack command and left click a specific target. I use the Apocalypse. I apologize for not being able to show it. I use the Apocalypse to right click immortals over there so that the immortals don't have to fight my bunkers, or rather, the bunkers don't have to fight the immortals. Remember, immortals hit hard against bunkers so I use Apocalypse to soften the blow by destroying the mortals first you can say I also have overlords here spreading creep that will hasten the rate at which my creep spreads all over the map meanwhile these infested troopers here soak up damage while my bunkers do more damage to the enemy can see they're not quite able to get any surface area whatsoever and that will allow me to destroy them with zero losses start another bunker over here you can see I no longer need to deal with this bonus because I've already dealt with it earlier now we're moving toward this spot and I just kind of attack move into this area I infest this pylon to A disable the cannon and B distract the immortal from fighting my bunkers I continuously move these guys here meanwhile I start another few bunkers by the way I intentionally did not take my expansion gases here you can see once my bunkers get low I just root them because these things gain more health or at least regain more lost health when they are rooted you can see it generates health pretty fast I sent my Infested Rally over here, it's not that far, so I think it kind of sort of still qualifies. So I used a uh, Alexander here to take out the Reavers. The Reavers are dangerous units for my Immortals, my Bunkers to fight. So I use the Alexander to right-click this Reaver. 
and I move on to the other reaver over here. You can see there's some action going on here. Immortal and Stalker fighting my dudes. This reaver is gone. That means this Alexander can just kind of chill out here. I use the Apocalypse on this side to fight this wave. Making more bunkers. Starting, an up, starting more upgrades and another Overlord. Meanwhile, I've made a sort of wall here with an extra barracks. You can see this is my barracks from earlier. I'm using it to kind of wall off against attacks so that the Zalots can't get surface area around my bunkers. Wave is going to hit this area and there will be not a thing thanks to repair from SEVs. Another wave on the way. They kind of got distracted for a little bit using my overlords, or rather via my overlords. So you can see I right click specific targets and delete the wave. Wave is hitting here. You can see the Zalots are derping around this area over here. They're not all getting their damage in, which is helpful for my bunkers to stay alive. Singular hybrid here will not stand a chance against two bunkers shooting at it. And this bunker will just regain its health. You can see the troopers starting to clear out. I'm kind of cheating a little bit by rallying my infested further, but that is okay because my bunkers are on the way. So we can kind of treat them like carrier interceptors. I root my bunkers over here to give them better survivability. And just delete these waves. I right click or target fire the Void Ray first and then the hybrid. The Void Ray outputs more damage so I think it's a better target, a more important target than my, or rather than the hybrid itself. You see I start another bunker over here, or rather a barracks actually. I start another barracks over here to derp out the enemy, make sure they don't focus fire my bunkers or at least not get surface area so you can see I'm focus firing down the immortals these two go down hybrid go down stock goes down and the last one also goes down I didn't even finish the backs I, I didn't need to finish it I just needed to block the enemy and that will allow me to continuously move on with my bunkers this was getting low so I need to root it I infest the pylon again to distract as well as surround the immortals. Also the, the power that had over there earlier. So yes, bunkers are pretty awesome. They can shoot down, they can shoot up, they can become buildings, they can become units. So now the next move is to try and get the bonus. That is fine. That's going to start a timer, but it's not a big deal. Uh-oh, I have two bunkers walking up here. I might actually lose them for no reason. And I actually will lose them for no reason. That is stupidity by me. And unfortunately, they will kind of get to the bunkers. <laughs> oh, well. I'm not actually sure why I sent my bunkers over here. Ah, I think it's because I rallied. I rallied these two bunkers over here in front. I use the Void Race to target down the Mothership so that the enemies here will be visible. Also, the Oracles are Detectors, which means I can't see the units even though they are cloaked. But the Mind Control units do take damage over time, so I will need to right-click the Mothership so that the detection is not needed anymore. Enemies moving in here. I actually didn't notice those two bunkers dying at first. Oh well. That's a bit sloppy, but... Everything else has been pretty good so far, so... Not really something I would consider repeating. Point of fact, bunkers are surprisingly difficult to stay alive. Because they don't have a fast heal on their own. 
I know they heal faster, but it's not fast heal. It's just slightly faster than the, the, the normal rate. Spawn over here, you can see I also have a whole line of barracks. Not a whole line, there's two barracks. You can see I unloaded these troopers here to de-aggro the enemy. That's something you can definitely do when your bunkers are under fire. Just unload the bunker and the enemies will change targets to something that is shooting at them. I use Apocalypse here. Clear it out and heavily damage those immortals. That is actually pretty helpful. My, my bunkers won't take that many hits as opposed to the normal amount because the Apollos softened up the blow of the Immortals for me. Starting two more Overlords and two more Bunkers. Just rinse and repeat. You can see I once again focused down this Immortal, then this Immortal. I unfortunately lost a Bunker, wasn't able to unload that. But one Bunker for all these units is an okay trade. I think one of the issues with Bunkers is actually that they take up too much space. I can't quite concentrate all my firepower in a single area because the bunkers take up so much space. So I think that is actually working against me when I use my bunkers. You can see by the way that that bonus timer is paused because I have a trickle beast constantly attacking it. And speaking of attack, I'm just about ready to move in. I uprooted all my bunkers and uprooted these bunkers and I'm getting ready to attack this area over here, which is softened up from earlier. I did unload that bunker, you can see the troopers unloaded but not in time to save that bunker. So it's not a completely foolproof method, although it's relatively reliable. Reliable but not foolproof is what I would call it. Have more buildings here. Speaking of more buildings, I'm starting to set up this camp over here. Barracks to block the approach and bunkers behind. Rooting these bunkers here first to regen health. Meanwhile, the main the main attack has commenced on this end. Root the bunkers so that they regen faster. Do not lose this one. I uh, saved it with 8 health. That's incredible. This bunker did its job amazingly. Meanwhile, the bunkers on the other side are now clearing this area over here. And I'm now setting up this area over here with a lot of bunkers. I'm moving this bunker to this area. Setting up a concave of bunkers here to maximize the damage output on the enemies. I'm also setting up an area over here. The last set of Terrigen Geysers has four enemy spawn points, so I'm camping all of them. This one, this one, this one, and this one. So, by by camping all these enemies, I'll be able to start shooting at the enemies as they spawn in their most vulnerable state, of course. Setting up barracks here to kind of provide a wall for my dudes. They spawn here right away. And I unfortunately lose this bunker despite unloading. I did unload, but not quite fast enough. The immortal is still aggroed onto it. Another one spawns here. I did unload this bunker, that saved it. That's pretty nice. Next one's here and I am set up this time. As you can say just focus down the immortals. And then everything else falls in short order. Another spawn over here. It's pretty fenced in. I unload this bunker which is taking fire to save it. So let it let it be said that I did try to preserve my forces by unloading the bunkers. 
it's just not foolproof. That's all. Another bunker unloaded to save the troopers inside. Starting more bunkers to complete the supply. Another wave. I use the pulse over here. To delete these dudes. Singular stalker. Again, guys, the apocalypse damage counts because it is still a massive unit. And this video is all about massive ground units, which... There you go. Another wave. No immortals, but they are able to still take out one bunker. But I did save the other bunker, so that, that is nice. I actually lost another bunker over here. That's actually a lot of damage. Maybe I should have put down another bunker. Barracks over here to kind of soften the blow. Another wave. This one actually did spawn behind my bunkers, but I did save two of them by unloading. That's pretty awesome. Last wave, I used Alexander on the Colossus, actually, to mind control them to soak up damage. Meanwhile, the bunkers all the while are shooting. I did also, I will also count damage from Colossus because they are ground massive units. I absolutely do count them. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll never be able to get anything done with Vega when I get to Tychus. I hate to count those. Last hybrid falls. We'll have one more wave which will spawn. Or not. We could use ratings. Now I'm gonna use these troopers to clear out this last building. I'm even gonna use the bunkers. That's pretty good. Uproot the bunkers. Uproot and uproot. Or not. We could use the ratings. There we go. Yeah, just clearing these last rocks so I can pad the stats a little bit. Before the game ends, you can see full clear, all bots saved, and all bonuses complete. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. If you have an idea for what else you can do, please leave that in a comment. Now let's see. Okay, so here we have the stats. Damage taken by Harvesters 266. Not the highest, but it's three digits. It's actually one of the lowest. <laughs> Interesting. So, we'll have damage. So, infested troopers with 48.6%. Add the bunkers themselves, 25.5%. And then add the apocalypse, 9.2%. And then. What's the Coop Caster Stukov? Is are those the doodlings? The dudes are five percent. What is the Coop Caster Stukov? I can't figure it out. Oh wait. Does the infest structure damage enemy buildings? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, one more thing. The call is one point one percent. 84%, that's not bad. That's actually the third, no, fourth. Fourth highest, not bad. All right, let's move on. Uki, we have for kills, infested troopers with 54%. Then add the bunkers themselves, 19%. The apocalypse, 15%. Mm, don't have the colossus on here. What's the remaining percentage? That's 88%. The Doodlings and Alexander at 7%. So I'm missing 5%. But I don't want to attribute that right away to Colossus. I think my infested civilians also did a bit of damage. Or had a few kills. See, yeah, I don't want to attribute that straight away to Colossus. In fact, I control a few things. I might control the Void Ray. Uh, rather several void rays several scouts so yeah i'd rather not attribute that to colossus let's just leave it 
88%. Survival, I think I should count troopers. What would happen if I counted troopers? I'm curious. So that's 1444 add 50 less 1198 less 10 over 1444 add 50. 90.1%. That's not that great, but 80% seems more reasonable. I did lose a few, but I, I know I lost two bunkers by at, by walking them into the enemy base unprotected. So if I didn't lose those bunkers, that would be closer to like 84%, which I don't think tips the scales that much. It's like, yeah, 0 0.8, 0 0.8 on that final score over there. I'll think I'll keep it at 80. It's not that big of a deal. Full map clear though. And all bots saved, so it's at 8.62. So it's up to you guys now. Do you like the Apocalypse and Infested Bunkers of Stukov? Let me know. A poll will go up tomorrow, and you guys can vote whether or not you like them. And I will see you guys next time.